Hi ladies and welcome back to Fertility Mom. My name is Rose and today we're going to be talking about fertility awareness method and basal body temperature charting. If you want the actual research and science behind getting pregnant naturally and all the tips and tricks about the things that you have control over and that you can do to help yourself get pregnant through this really confusing journey, then subscribe to my channel, Fertility Mom, and hit the bell so you know when I upload new videos every week. If you're totally confused about what the fertility signals are, how basal body temperature charting can help you, or what fertility awareness even is, then watch this video because by the end you'll be able to pinpoint your exact fertility days and when your peak fertile window is. I've helped lots of women learn how to do basal body temperature charting in the past, and it's helped them to get pregnant naturally and faster. So there's three main fertility signals that you're gonna wanna concern yourself with tracking so that you can actually pinpoint your peak fertility days. And those three things are cervical mucus, cervical position, and basal body temperature. Now cervical mucus and cervical position give you an indication of when you're about to ovulate. It kind of, they, they change throughout the follicular phase and they tell you when you're going to. And basal body temperature will actually show you after you've ovulated. So once your body temperature rises from the progesterone, then your temperature chart should look something like this, where you have low temperatures throughout your follicular phase and then a very noticeable rise in temperature right after you ovulate and you will continue to carry higher temperatures throughout your luteal phase until you either get your period and your temperature drops again or you are pregnant and your temperatures will actually stay up and go up throughout your pregnancy. So the, again, the basal body temperature tells you after you've ovulated. The other two signals are telling you when you're about to ovulate. So if you're brand new to charting, you should chart two. Chart cervical mucus, because that's really important for sperm. Remember the cervical mucus is what feeds and keeps the sperm nourished and alive for the days leading up to your ovulation. And your basal body temperature. Cervical mucus, basal body temperature. Those are the two. Cervical position can be important, especially if you're breastfeeding. Uh, if you're breastfeeding a younger baby and trying to get pregnant, that can actually give you a really good indication of when you are really about to ovulate. If you guys have any specific questions about that, throw that in the questions and we can talk about it. So you might be wondering, like, I don't, I don't even know where to start with this. I have no idea how to track these things. How do I understand what it means? So cervical mucus, like we talked about in my last episode, quality and consistency is going to change as your estrogen rises throughout your follicular phase. So it's going to go from lotion to watery to egg white. And you're actually going to notate that on the chart. So I'm going to just put up a chart right now and, and you'll see around the area that ovulation has occurred, you'll, you'll notice that there's annotations about what the cervical mucus looked like. Basal body temperature, the way that you do that is you need a special kind of thermometer. It's not, not just a regular thermometer. What you need is a special basal body temperature thermometer that measures your temperature to the hundredth, which means two decimal places, so 98.64 or 97.38 or whatever. So it needs to be to two decimal places. And I'll, I'll throw some links down below so that you know which kinds of thermometers that I'm talking about. So... In order to take your basal body temperature accurately, you need to have been sleeping consecutively for three to four hours without waking up or getting up, and you need to take your temperature first thing in the morning before you get up at the exact same time. So for instance, if my alarm goes off at 7 a.m. every day, I'm gonna take my temperature under my tongue at 7 a.m. every single day before I get out of bed. If you've been up, a lot the previous night or if you were drinking or if you're sick or if the room was colder that can throw off your temperatures a lot I'll do a whole separate video on how your chart changes but we're just gonna talk about normal charting for right now so the most important thing to, to understand while you are new to charting your basal body temperature is that it's about the overall trend 
So the very first time that you go to chart and you're looking at your, your fertility signals and you're not really sure what goes where and did I ovulate, what's my temperature telling me, it's about the trend. So you're going to have to do it for at least a month or two or three to see what your trend is. After a few, you're going to realize, okay, I ovulate around day 14, 15, 16 or 10, 11, 12. You'll understand generally where your ovulation is. Uh, some women are working under the assumption that they ovulate around day 14, but they really ovulate on day 19, and they're missing their critical fertility window. So they're not going to get pregnant if they're not timing intercourse at the correct time. So it's about the overall trend. You're going to have to do it for a couple of months to get into the routine, into the habit of it. And once you understand how your fertility signals change throughout your cycle, you'll be able to optimize your health and optimize your fertility so that you can get pregnant naturally and faster. Okay, just in case none of that stuff I said earlier made any sense to you at all, I'm going to do this just to make it a little bit more clear about what I'm talking about. So in my first episode, we talked about what's happening in the menstrual cycle, and you have two phases. You've got your follicular phase and your luteal phase, and I always have trouble saying this word, and I'm really not sure what that's about, but we're going to just keep going. Just pretend that I can say it really well, you guys, okay? So in your follicular phase, you have lower temperatures. And then once you ovulate, your temperature is going to go up. So you're going to have a noticeable temperature shift because progesterone makes your temperature go up. So follicular phase starts on day one when you have your first full day of actual bleeding, not spotting. Your estrogen is going to be rising, rising, rising throughout this period. And then you're going to have changes in your cervical mucus quality, okay, because that's what estrogen does. So it's going to change your cervical mucus from like nothing to creamy lotion to watery and then to egg white cervical mucus. And the watery and the egg white cervical mucus is the most fertile kind. So this is where you want to time your intercourse, okay, because you want your the sperm to be waiting for the egg to drop. So ovulation is occurring on this day because the very next day you see that there's been a temperature shift because the temperature shifting is a confirmation that ovulation has happened, okay? So egg white cervical mucus and cervical position, which we haven't really talked about, but I will I will talk a little bit more about that. Those are the things that will tell you that your body's gearing up to ovulate, and then the temperature shift tells you that ovulation has already happened. And in order for, for the temperatures to tell you that ovulation has happened, you need at least three consecutive higher temperatures that are at least 0 0.3 degrees higher than the previous six, okay? So these three temperatures are the ones that have confirmed ovulation because they are at least 0 0.3 degrees higher than these previous six temperatures, okay? Now there's a little wiggle room on this because some outside factors can affect how your temperatures go up or down. So if you have a drink or two the night before, or you have a cold, or you had a really bad night of sleep, that can make your temperature seemingly go up when you haven't ovulated. But that's something we'll cover in a different episode. This is a normal chart. I just want to go over that first. Okay? So how you're going to take your temperature is every single morning at the exact same time with the same temperature, at least with at least three to four hours of consecutive sleep. So same time every morning before you wake up or get up, before you get out of bed with at least three to four hours of consecutive sleep. So even on days that you're going to be sleeping in, if you wake up for work at 530 in the morning and on the weekends you sleep until seven, just set your alarm for 530 in the morning. Take the temperature under your tongue. It will let you know when it's done. And the ones that I have suggested that you use for this will I will remember. So you don't even have to look at it or put it in the chart yet. You can just remember to look at it later. And then there's a couple of ones that have Bluetooth capability as well, and I'll put that in the links so you can see those as well. But this is a basic basal body temperature chart without any uh, weird hormonal challenges on here, but I will do an episode about the hormonal challenges that you can find on your basal body temperature chart. This is a great tool for you to use to figure out whether you're ovulating, when you are ovulating, so that you know that you're having intercourse at the correct time. And if you see here, ovulation happened on day 18 on this cycle, okay? Didn't happen on that traditional 14-day model. So if someone thinks that they're ovulating on day 14, but they're really ovulating on day 18, and they're timing their intercourse from like days 11 and 13, and they're not having intercourse again until maybe like day 21, they're going to have completely missed their window, and they're going to go months and months and months trying 
had to have intercourse at a time that's not going to result in a pregnancy for them. So this is potentially one of the biggest things you can do to learn about your body. And I highly, highly, highly encourage you to learn how to do it. And I will walk you through it as, as much as you want. Ask me questions and I will be sure to help you ladies get the results that we want from this. All righty. So that's a really general and basic overview of basal body temperature charting. Uh, I hope you found it helpful. I hope you learned something new. I'll throw some resources down below for you if you want to learn more. Also, send questions. Put questions in the comment section. Like, like me. No, but put questions in the comment section so I know how best I can serve you. Um, visit my website where I have my free five-step fertility boosting uh, guide for you, and that has a lot of great stuff in there and a little bit more in-depth of what we talked about today. Uh, so you can go do that. And I also have a Facebook group that I would love to have you join me and we can talk about really cool things and help each other out. So thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next time on Fertility Mom. Bye!